Nature is a force to be reckoned with. Flooding has left this bridge in ruins. Violent storms are frequent here and they bring heavy rains and flooding. Locals say there are more storms than ever before and blame climate change. The storms are also affecting local livelihoods. Domingo Cuevas Florian took over this plantation next to Lake Enriquillo 20 years ago. The saltwater lake has spilled over its banks and is growing at an alarming rate. Much of what used to be agricultural land is now underwater. People here have lost everything, even their sanity. They've lost their land, they don't know what to do. These aren't people who receive a check every month. They live off agriculture, the work of their own hands for Mother Earth. The Dominican president has paid the area a visit, but the state hasn't provided any help to local farmers yet, Cuevas Florian says. Well, I'll probably go to the capital to work as a night watchman. There's nothing left here. Cuevas Florian invites us to his home. The family recently sold their kitchen table to scrape together some money for food. Feeding his family is becoming more and more difficult. As the lake swallows land along its banks, the iguanas are also being forced to find a new habitat. Some people believe the rising water is coming from deep inside the earth. Others say that warmer temperatures have led to more ocean evaporation and more rainfall, which has increased runoff into the lake. We go to the area near the border to Haiti. Man's intervention has had a visible effect on the environment. Deforestation has been a widespread problem over the past decades. Now trees are being replanted. Papaya and avocado trees are being farmed using irrigation systems. The locals benefit from the steady work and comparatively good wages. Pictures like these are a mainstay of the Dominican economy. Tourism is an important source of income. The capital, Santo Domingo, is where Christopher Columbus landed in the 15th century. He had a vision. And so does the Dominican government. With help from Germany, they plan to reduce carbon dioxide emissions by 25% within two decades. Victor Vignas played an important role in developing the program. I'm an optimist. Of course, the initiative will require a great deal of organization, a great deal of work and monitoring. We'll need to ensure that measures are actually implemented over the coming years. And that's what we'll need to do if we hope to reduce CO2 emissions by 25% by 2030. Germany supports many climate and social projects in the Dominican Republic. The programs also benefit Victor Mateo. He grows coffee and trees, and sometimes he's forced to cut down a tree to make ends meet. Sometimes cutting down a tree is the only way to feed my family. That's why we ask the government to help the coffee growers, so that we can make a living and aren't forced to move to the cities. The forest is now monitored. This police officer is on the lookout for illegal logging. But it's a large area to cover, so it's doubtful that he can do much to stem the tide of illegal logging. Haiti is just across the border. There, the land is dry and brown. There's virtually no reforestation there. Only about 2% of Haiti is still covered in forest. The German development bank KFW has contributed 8.5 million euros to the Dominican initiatives. In the mountains, local residents badly need a new source of income. The farmers are being shown alternatives to logging and clear-cutting. One alternative is greenhouse farming. Maritza Rodriguez and her sister are planting peppers, lettuce and tomatoes. 
Maritza says she knows that the way she used to clear land was harmful to the environment. Yes, I cleared everything that was in the way in order to plant beans. Everything was chopped down and burned. That's how we got land for planting. Rodriguez has agreed to help reforest a parcel of land in the hills. In exchange, she's now the owner of one of these greenhouses. Meanwhile, she's able to earn a living off what she grows here. But there have also been setbacks. A storm destroyed everything, just everything. We're finally beginning to recover from it. Everything was destroyed. The rebuilding effort is in full swing. The projects are all being coordinated by the Dominican Republic's Ministry of Environment and Natural Resources. Deputy Minister Manuel Serrano is here for a visit to monitor progress in the region. The population is at serious risk here, and we need to help these communities adjust their ways of farming to situations that arise as a result of climate change. We know that climate change is coming, that it's here and we can't stop it. More than 10,000 people are benefiting from the climate initiatives, and so is the countryside, which is getting greener and greener.